Here's the brief news from the world over this week. Israel's ground offensive in Gaza continues. On Thursday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that Israel would destroy the Hamas tunnel network in the Gaza Strip with or without a ceasefire. The tunnel network runs through Gaza and into Israel. 1,300 Palestinians, mostly civilians, and more than 50 Israelis, nearly all of them soldiers, have been killed since the conflict began on July 8th. Israel has been on the receiving end of more than a thousand Hamas rockets, yet they've received international criticism for the heavy loss of civilian lives. We'll discuss it in our next segment. And House Speaker John Boehner's pared down bill addressing the immigration crisis on the U.S. Mexico border has been resurrected. Lacking the votes for passage, the legislation was yanked from consideration early Thursday. A conservative revolt by members of the House and the general public was to blame. But later in the day, the bill came back to life. GOP leaders said they will delay their August recess until the, they vote on the bill. It provides funds for additional immigration judges, humanitarian aid, and would amend the law to hasten the deportation of young Central American illegal immigrants. We'll get into the details with Congressman Fortenberry in a bit. As America wrestles with immigration policy, a crackdown is underway in Great Britain. Well, Prime Minister David Cameron announced a plan on Monday that would cut benefits to EU migrants. Those benefits would be reduced from six months to three months. In an interview with the UK Telegraph, Cameron said migrants cannot expect to come to Britain and get something for nothing. Back in January, automatic benefits had already been cut for migrant job seekers. Child tax credits were slashed as well. The government plan would also ban the advertising of domestic jobs exclusively abroad. It will require ads for such openings to be run in the UK as well and in English. A spokesman for the UK Independence Party, UKIP, says the reforms don't go far enough. The party says the influx of more than 4 million migrants over the last 10 years has flooded the labor market and driven down wages for British citizens. And the government's crackdown on Christians in China's eastern provinces is intensifying, according to multiple reports. On Monday, hundreds of police stormed a church to remove a cross that stood atop its steeple. Last Friday, 4,000 police were brought in to remove two crosses atop another church. The dramatic show of force is in response to the communist regime's concern over the growth of Christianity. By some estimates, the number of Christians in China now equals the number of Communist Party members. Crosses have not been the only targets of government authorities. Since the beginning of the year, more than 100 churches have been ordered demolished for alleged zoning violations. And in Vietnam, a United Nations official said he experienced, quote, serious violations of religious freedom this week. While on a fact-finding mission in the country, U.N. special reporter Heiner Bielfeldt said he was surveilled and harassed by unidentified government security agents. They also reportedly intimidated individuals with whom he met. Religion remains under state supervision in Vietnam, which is predominantly Buddhist. In 2006, Vietnam was removed from the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom's list of countries of particular concern. But in their latest report, they recommend that Vietnam be returned to the list as a country of concern. The Holy See Press Office has announced the official dates of Pope Francis's apostolic journey to Sri Lanka and the Philippines. The pontiff will visit Sri Lanka from January 12th to the 15th of 2015. Then he's off to the Philippines until January 19th. More on Pope Francis and the church in the Philippines with Manila Cardinal Luis Tagle later in the show. And don't forget, right around the corner is the Holy Father's apostolic visit to Korea, and we will be there with you August 13th through, through 18th. EWTN will bring you live coverage of that historic event. And the ecumenical outreach of Pope Francis continues. On Monday, the Holy Father became the first pope to visit a Pentecostal church. 
speaking to some 350 congregants of the Southern Italy Church, the Pope apologized and asked forgiveness on behalf of Catholics who persecuted Pentecostals during Italy's fascist regime. He decried those who saw Pentecostals, quote, as if they were crazies trying to ruin the race. The planned visit to the Pentecostal Church caused some controversy among local Catholics. Vatican journalist Sandro Magister reported last week that many believe the Pope should be visiting the Catholics in Caserta, Italy. The local bishop didn't even know about the Pentecostal visit until after it was announced in the media. After what was described as tense discussions, the Holy Father did change his plans. He met with local Catholics on Saturday before his Monday visit with the Pentecostals. And financial markets took a downward spiral this week after Argentina defaulted on its debt. The Dow plummeted 317 points to 16,563, a two-month low. This is the second debt default for Argentina in the last 13 years. The loss ends a five-month string of Dow and S&P gains. And finally, back here on Capitol Hill, a congressional resolution honoring Pope Francis for his example and inspiration is apparently stuck in legislative purgatory. The bill has the support of 201 Democratic House members, but only 19 Republicans. It's not received a single vote out of committee. Partisan politics could be at play. The Hill cites a Republican supporter who says fellow GOP members have withheld their support because Pope Francis is, quote, sounding like President Obama and is, quote, too liberal. The source specifically mentioned the Pope's criticism of free market economic policies. Lead sponsor Democrat John Larson of Connecticut has urged Speaker John Boehner to hold a vote on the resolution. We'll keep you posted.